Hi everybody. One of the most difficult things we can do on the canvas is to draw shapes with multiple sides, whether it's your triangle, a square, a pentagon, hexagon, dodecahedron, or any other kind of shape, it gets very tricky to draw them because the math involved gets tricky depending on what you're trying to do. Well, in this video, we're going to look at a very simple generalizable approach that allows us to draw any shape with just one set of heuristics, one implementation. So the reason is this. We saw earlier how to draw a triangle, and the way we did that was by really pulling in all the trigonometric tricks we know about how to make sense of a triangle's height and length and size and so on, and using techniques that probably for decades we haven't had to use, at least since we were in school and had to do these things by using a calculator and all those things. Now, when we look at all the shapes that are available though, there are many. You have at least at the bare minimum, you have like nine very common shapes that you get into and you have shapes with more sides as well. But as you can probably see, the more sides you add to these shapes, the more of a circle they ultimately become. But it doesn't matter though. You know, we need a way to be able to draw all these shapes and having to do that math and special casing each one, that becomes a bit of a hassle. And so in a generalist approach, there's an observation we can see when we look at all of our circles. That is that all of our shapes points, their vertices, can be placed on a circle. And what I mean is this. Earlier we saw all of the shapes. Notice that each point fits very nicely on a circle. And what we're going to do though is use this particular detail to our advantage. We're going to use this detail to help define how to draw all of these various multi-sided shapes. So we've seen how to draw a triangle before. We've seen how to draw a square before. And so we're going to pick on another shape and we're going to pick on the friendly pentagon. You can see the pentagon right here. So the steps involved here are a few and you kind of have to just follow them, you know, one by one. The first step is to identify the number of points our shape will have or the number of vertices our shape will have. In the case of a pentagon, there are going to be five points or five vertices, vertex one, vertex two, vertex three, vertex four, and vertex five. That's pretty easy, right? You know, for a hexagon, it's gonna be six, octagon, it's gonna be eight. You just need to know exactly how many of those points will be. The next part, and this is the part that we don't actually see when we're presenting our circle, our shape is the virtual circle that we use to plot all these points. Now this virtual circle is very important because it helps determine the exact position of all the vertices that we wanna put. It also determines the size of our shape as well. The radius of our circle, a big radius means we have a big shape. A small radius means we have a small shape. And you can see here that as any circle goes in our world, it's in the form of radians, goes from zero pi to two pi. And you can see the full range of positions that our vertices could potentially fall under. Now, the important part here is we need to calculate the angle of each vertex because when you look at, when you go back to our circle, the place where we plot each of our points is going to be largely determined by the angle it is from where you're currently using it from. And so the way we find the angle is by dividing the number of points, the number of vertices, into two pi, the number of radians in a full circle. In this case, for our pentagon, the angle of each vertex will be two pi over five, which comes out to 1.25. Six. Now, this probably seems very abstract. So, okay, how does this angle even make sense? What, what are we doing here? The next image hopefully helps clarify this. Notice that now we have vertex one, and then 1.256 radians later, we have vertex two, 1.256 radians later, we have vertex three, and this whole process repeats itself until you have all of your vertices fully plotted. And of course, because the angle we determined is two pi, the full circles number of radians, divided by the number of points, we know that all of these points are going to be equidistant from each other. The distance between vertex one and vertex two, same as the dis distance from vertex two to vertex three, three to four, four to five, and also five to one. And this is kind of what helps make sure that when we go to the next step, where we draw the lines, you can see the straight lines between all the various points and then creating a up in this case, a pentagon that is perfectly balanced, very symmetrical, ni nice and evenly sized. Now, the full code for how to do all of this is in my article on Krupa.com, easily draw any polygon. And the easiest way for you to get there is just go to Google, type in Krupa, draw any polygon, you'll find the article very quickly. But I do wanna walk through the code a bit and just show you how it actually works. And it is kind of pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into in this case IDX where you can see my a live version of the code from the web page that I had my tutorial 
earlier. So what you see here in this case is a pentagon that continuing the example from earlier. And the big thing to focus here is our drop polygon function. So here we have drop polygon. And this function in many ways is a direct translation of the steps we saw earlier in terms of identifying number of points, identifying the virtual circle and the radius that we want to have the size of our shape be mapped to, and the angle between each of the various points that we can calculate, and finally drawing a line between all the points. And so the arguments we need to care about here are the actual one for the, the canvas object that we want to point to, which is CTX, the center of our shape, horizontal center, vertical center, number of sides our shape will have, the size of the radius, and also an optional rotation property. And the reason is that, and I'll show you in a second, it's because our point, point zero, the first point of our shape, is always gonna be the zero degree mark, which for some shapes it makes sense, but for our square, for example, it will be, it will look like it'll be a little bit lopsided. It will look like a diamond. And I'll look at it and I'll show you in a second what that means. So the way we use this in this case, you can see here for the parameters for uh, for the pentagon, I call it polygon here. Well, it is it is a polygon, but let's just make it pentagon. You can see const sides equals five. Center of this is gonna be the width of the canvas divided by two. The vertical center is gonna be the height of the canvas divided by two. Radius is 300 pixels and the rotation is zero. And I call draw polygon and you can see it working appropriately. Just for fun, let me say we want to do an octagon instead. Let me do size eight. I hit refresh. You can now see that our what was a pentagon before is now an octagon currently. And the, another detail is that the color and of the, of the shape, the stroke and the fill color are entirely specified in our drop polygon uh, function itself. If you want to parameterize it, by all means, you can absolutely do so. Just make sure to modify both your the arguments drop polygon takes and also the arguments you pass in. I kind of kept it this way, but consider it a, a fun little activity for you to perform. Now let's go back to a square and explain why I want the rotation to come up. So I'm gonna put four square and let's go hit refresh. When I draw the square, notice how the square kind of looks, you know, it looks like a diamond mostly because when we think of a square, we think of all of at least the bottom side to be parallel to what we think of as the floor or the horizon. And that's where the rotation property comes in, where in this case, rotation is zero. I'll just do math, you know, we want to rotate by 40 degrees, 45 degrees. So math.pi divided by four. And when I do that, you can now see the square is appropriately rotated. And if you go back to the Pentagon, for example, you'll see that it is also going to be rotated. And you know, with these multi-sided shapes, it's a, a, at least shapes that are not quite your square. There's a bit of wiggle room. You know, how, how does a pentagon normally look or a hexagon, an octagon look in real life? Not too many frames of reference outside of like stop signs and road signs like that. So feel free to play with the rotation as much as you want. For the shape, for the square though, I recommend you pass in math.py divided by four just to give it a 45 degree rotation. And so the last detail I want to call out here is that you may have noticed that all the shapes we're drawing are very symmetrical. They're all the sides are equal, all the interior angles are equal to make sure the sides are equal. And there's a name for that. And that name is normal. Yes, the very commonly used word normal has a very specific value in geometry when it comes to shapes. And what it means is that all the shapes that are normal have equally sized sides and all their interior angles are the same as well. If we didn't have the normal property, technically our pentagon, for example, just needs to have five points and five sides, which means that these six blob-like variations you see here are actual pentagons as well, but not the kind of pentagons that we are drawing because by default, our code, by mapping it on a circle with equidistant angles between each of the point, we naturally get polygons that are normal. So convenient for us. So there you have it. Uh, now I would say a very quick overview, but a medium sized overview of how to draw any kind of polygon with any number of sides, very simply using one single approach, which is this generalized approach where we use a virtual circle and plot all the vertices on the points on the circle itself to make sure we have all of these nice shapes that we can do very easily, ranging everything from your triangle. So the earlier approach is for a triangle absolutely works, but you can ignore that for now and use this approach instead to draw triangles and squares and any other shape. And only thing to keep in mind is that 
the number of sides gets really, really high, guess what? You're going to be getting very close to having a circle. So just you know, keep that in mind if you're wondering why when you put a thousand sides together, the output does not look like a, a very thin jagged diamond. It looks like a, a circle. So just keep that in mind. And with that, if you have a question, post in the forums at formatcrypt.com where I and others would be very happy to help you out. Subscribe to the newsletter where I talked actually about this a while ago. So the newsletter is a great way to get a preview of some of these topics I write about before I actually write about them or record a video on them. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter and on various other social media platforms. Just go to Google, type in Krupa and Instagram or Krupa and YouTube or any other area you'll find me right there. And lastly, check out my books. You'll see a link to it in the video below where I talk about this and other topics in much greater detail as part of a larger cohesive narrative, especially if that fits your boat there in paperback and Kindle editions. And with that, I will see you all next time.